All right, guys, so this was the point that I got to when I finally was done. I was absolutely done with Premiere Pro. I was I was so ticked off, I jumped on Adobe's forum to leave a comment saying, Premiere Pro crashed for the last time, I'm effing done. I was pretty ticked. And just so happened by random guess, I got back on there and read somebody's comment. And he goes, like, well, it sucks that you're absolutely done with Premiere Pro, so I guess leaving this comment's not gonna do any good, but have you tried uninstalling everything? And then not just uninstalling, everything going through and deleting absolutely everything from the computer related to Premiere Pro. If you haven't, you might want to try this before you give up on Premiere Pro completely. So I was like, well, I've literally spent a month and hours and hours and hours of watching different YouTube videos and then more hours making training videos teaching you how to do that one little part of the fix just to get to where I got to to give up. I'm like, nah, I got to try this one out. So I did. And ugh, that was it. So it's been a combination of all of these things that have really left me where I'm at now. No crashes, no issues. I'm pretty sure a lot of things that I was doing wrong led to the corruption in my files, led for the yada, yada, yada. So without me over talking it, this was the holy grail. This was the last thing that I did that actually was the game changer. After this change was made, no more crashes. So let's go ahead and get into that right now. All right, what up YouTube? You guys ready to dive into it? So what causes Premiere Pro to crash? It's such a wide variety of things, so I'm gonna really bang these out as fast as humanly possible. Just do me a favor. If this does help you, please hit that subscribe button. I've worked so hard trying to figure this out and I finally have a solution and I guarantee you, if you execute everything that I actually teach you or you implement the things that I teach you, Premiere Pro is going to work so much better for you. So this sequence, for example, if I go into sequence and go to sequence settings, I can see that the sequence settings are set to 23.976. So there's several things wrong with this, but just let's go ahead and say the frame rate is 23.976. Just gonna hit cancel. If you look over here, I have this intro. I was making intros and lower thirds and not even thinking about it. When I bring this intro in, this intro was recorded at 25 frames per second. So since my sequence is 23.976 frames per second, obviously it doesn't match. So your intros, lower thirds, outros, end screens, all of those things that you put into your videos, they need to match the same frame rate as your sequence. So if I go over here and I right click on it, I go to modify, interpret footage. I come up here and I type in 23.976. 976. Go ahead and press OK. Now when I bring and drop it into my sequence, it's going to have the same frame rate. Same thing if you have the little subscribe buttons that scroll across the screen. You need to make sure that if your sequence is 23 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, whatever it is, you need to make your clips match. So when I bring a video into Premiere Pro, creating a cache file so that when I'm in this view, I get this little preview of it. So Premiere Pro automatically creates the cache file for you. That way you can kind of see a little preview of your clip and it saves it in your media caches. If I come over here and I rename this, in about two seconds, this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. And most people are like, okay, I don't even care. I'm not using that clip, I don't need it. They're just gonna hit cancel. Now what Premiere Pro has is a cached file, same file, same size, same everything, and it's got a cached version, but it doesn't have the real version. So we're going to always wanna make sure anytime we have a question mark video, if we're not using it, we need to delete it. So where I'm going with that, we come up into Premiere Pro, we go into Preferences, and we go to Media Cached. So when I actually got the fix, the last change I made was on December 16th of 2020. It's now January 17th of 2020. I have not had a crash since I made this last change, and that's where I'm gonna get you guys. I'm gonna get you guys 30 days worth of editing, not one single crash in Premiere Pro if you follow all of these tips that I give you. I can't say exactly 100% which one actually was really the actual big game changer, but I can show you guys, look at how many files I've had here. This is how many files I've brought into Premiere Pro. From lower, lower thirds to end screens to intros to actual clips I've been editing. If I go all the way up to the top here and I choose the top one all the way down to the bottom one and select them all. 8,385 pieces of content that I've brought into Premiere Pro. And I've pretty much gone through and trimmed and cut. I've did things to every single one of these clips. That's why I bought them in a Premiere Pro. Where I'm going with this is I have this set to media cache management, do not delete cache files. And I did this on purpose so I could show you guys this again, if this actually worked. I was actually only planning on going two weeks and kind of got busy and forgot about it and haven't had time to make this video. And I've just been going and going. Previously, I had this set to automatically delete oldest cache files at 100 gigs. I just showed you guys 30 days worth of editing, pretty much 16 to 20 hours a day in Premiere Pro. I have created 8,385 in the media cached files. 
We're gonna go here, go to the first one, all the way down here, and you're literally going to drag these all into the trash. So if I let this continue to go on, I would have 167,700 cached files in this folder before this got to 100 gigs. If I had it defaulted set to 90, I would be at about 20, uh, 25,000, I think, give or take. Yeah, so about 25,155. That's still insane. That's so many cache files. That's so many times that you're changing the name of things, moving things around, deleting them from your desktop or deleting them from your computer and going into new programs and getting on a new versions or updated versions of Premiere Pro. These media cache files were probably from older versions of Premiere Pro if you have automatic update on. Or for me, for example, I was actually using the beta version of Premiere Pro 2021 and the old version. So I had cache files from the new one, cache files from the old one, and they were actually probably titled the same because I had them labeled the same in both projects. I don't really know, but all of these things were causing issues to the point where I was crashing in Premiere Pro every five minutes. So we're gonna go on here and we're gonna choose automatically delete cache files. Let's go older than 30 days. If storage is an issue on your computer, you're definitely gonna wanna set this to seven days. All right, guys, so we're going to go up here to go. We're going to hold down option. We're going to choose library. So when you search Premiere Pro 2020, it's going to pull up all of the Premiere Pro 2020 programs. But you might have several versions of Premiere Pro pulled up on your computer. So you're going to type in Premiere Pro. Click Premiere Pro. Click the little plus sign. We're going to do system files are included. And then we're going to also click the plus sign. And we're going to do kind. We're gonna do application. This is going to find the actual Premiere Pro application itself. So if you have other applications like Premiere Pro 2019, 18, maybe even a beta 2021 version, that has to go. You cannot have, I shouldn't say you cannot have. I will say that if you're having issues, this may be a cause of it. It seems like I was having, you know, minor problems, Premiere Pro crashing, you know, I don't know, every couple of hours, not nothing crazy that I just couldn't deal with and it just wasn't the end of the day. Then all of a sudden it started happening super frequently and one of the things that I noticed that I did was I installed the beta version 2021 right about the same time I started having all those issues. That being said, we want to make sure that we're going to uninstall these properly. So this was really the biggest game changer and what really did it for me. So we found our application. I can also right click and I can go show an enclosed folder. Once I do show an enclosed folder, I can see the uninstall Premiere Pro 2020. So I wanna remove this. I wanna make sure that I uninstall this. So I'm gonna do the uninstallation process. But before I run the uninstallation process, I wanna make sure that I get anything else out of here that may be corrupted because even when I reinstall Premiere Pro, inside like I showed you guys before, our media cache files, if we still have cache files that are corrupt and we go to open up an old project that's calling for corrupt cache files, it's going to give you the same issue. So that's why you wanna make sure you get rid of all of those corrupt files. Another thing, if we go into our graphics tab, if you've installed a ton of Mogurt, this I guarantee you is causing Premiere Pro to lag. It's causing Premiere Pro to use more memory. I'm gonna show you guys here when I start using Mogurt's inside Premiere Pro. I'm gonna go from using two gigs of RAM all the way up to five or six gigs of RAM. These Mogurt's are so bad in my opinion. Anytime you can create one of these things in a program like After Effects and use it as an MP4 file, like how you see in this intro, I actually made this exact same intro into a Mogurt and Premiere Pro was using eight gigs of RAM to actually play this and allow me to edit this and customize this Mogurt. What you wanna do, make sure Finder's open, go to Go, hold down Option, Library, Application Support, Adobe, Common, Motion Graphics Templates. So these are all the Mogurts that I have installed in Premiere Pro. So if you look right here, you see button one, and then I look over in my Motion Graphics Template and I see button one. If I right click, move to trash, it's going to instantly delete that from my program. Now again, if that was being used in my program, I would get that little red error. It would basically have created a cached file. So as you're deleting Mogurts, if they've been used in sequences or and they're in a project already, you need to make sure that you go through the project and you delete them out of the project because they're gonna have that little arrow there as well. Mogurts, in my opinion, are just a nightmare in Premiere Pro especially if you do not have the proper hardware or you have a laptop or anything like that, using the Mogurt feature is going to do nothing but create issues for you. Normally I'll have about four or five in here. Like I would never have these title screens. These things are a complete waste. So I'm gonna, just gonna go through here and delete everything I'm not using out of my Mogurt's file. Creative Titles 2, Creative Titles 9.
So now that we got Premiere Pro uninstalled, we're gonna wanna go on to creativecloud.com and we're gonna wanna make sure that we have the most recent version of Premiere Pro installed. We're gonna open it back up. Premiere Pro opens back up. Another issue, and I try to stay up on the forum, so another issue that I've heard people having problems with is when they start changing around the workspace. So not just changing around the workspace, but maybe like undocking this panel and moving it over here or completely changing the layout of this, like moving this panel over to this side. When you start changing the layout of workspaces, Premiere Pro seems to have issues. I've read a lot about it on the forums. I personally never change it, but it's been an issue for a lot of people. So if you've moved things around and customized the layout of this, you know, it might've worked fine in Premiere Pro version 13, version 12, but for whatever reason in these newer versions, it's causing issues. So if you come up here, and you go reset to save layout, it's gonna default back to the save layout. Now I've not heard of anybody having issues with like resizing things or just basic. It was always issues where they were undocking things and moving things to different parts of the screen. That was what was causing them issues. So you see right here when I'm opening projects and this happens, this is not good. You wanna make sure that you're just not opening any old projects that have this going on and then trying to continue to pick up where you left off. I strongly suggest just restarting the program and recreating new projects. Like I went through each one of my projects, each one of these old projects and I found the files that I wanted to keep the sequences that I wanted to keep. I came over here, I started a new project and I pasted all of this new sequences in and all of my footage back into an organized template. So let me show you guys what an organized Premiere Pro project looks like. So see how much cleaner this project is? I have my end screens built into folders, intros, lower thirds, motion graphics, templates, music. So if I click my music drop down, I have all my music right here. I've also pre-built these into templates. So if I go into file, I go to open project, and I open a 30 frames per second template. So when I open my 30 frames per second template, it doesn't matter if I open up cameras, if I open up end screens, if I open up intros, everything you see in through this entire template, all the way down to my lower thirds, everything is 30 frames per second. So I pre-built templates that already have all my subscribe buttons. So if I double click this, my subscribe button is 30 frames per second. If I want a please and thank you subscribe, it's 30 frames per second. If I want to come up here and play this Premiere Pro intro, you can see it's 30 frames per second. So when I change a clip from 23 frames per second to 30 frames per second or 29.97 frames per second, there is a difference between 30 and 29.97. There is a difference between 24 and 23.976. So understand that there's a difference. But since this clip was originally 23 frames per second and I changed it to 30, it sped it up. So when I right click on it, I can just go speed duration. Well. I'll let you guys hear it. So listen to this. See how fast that audio is and fast the clip's playing? Make sure you have both the video and audio selected. Speed duration, 80%. So you can actually see that once you change the frame rate, it's definitely gonna change the speed of the clip, but you just need to pull out your calculator and find out what the percentage was, whatever the difference was. Right click, speed duration, and then make the proper adjustment. Sometimes you need to slow them down, sometimes you need to speed them up. And that's only for a video where it actually matters, where the audio matters, the video matters. If it's just something like a simple subscribe button or an animated lower thirds, but for example, like this end screen. This end screen was originally 30 and I changed it to 29.97. I'm not worried about that being different. I don't care if that plays a little different. It's an end screen. It's not something that actually matters like an intro or an actual clip where I'm talking, things like that. You just gotta kinda play with these things. Pay attention, these things all matter. And if you wanna be fast and efficient in Premiere Pro, I promise you, you guys make these changes. Uninstall that program. And when you start editing in the newest version, don't make all these mistakes that I was making. Make sure you go in here and you set your media caches to the right settings so you're not saving a bunch of cache files that are getting corrupted. All these things are gonna make such a big difference, guys, so hopefully this video helps you out. All right, YouTube, if you guys are still with me, I'm mind blown. If you are really, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, could you please drop a comment below? Could you please hit that subscribe button? Could you please give it a like at the very least just to thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Appreciate you guys. So hopefully you guys are all crushing it in 2021. Hopefully this actually fixes Premiere Pro for you like it did for me. I know if you're actually still watching this video, that means you're actually in love with Premiere Pro like I am. I didn't want to switch to, I did not want to switch to DaVinci Resolve. I really hope that Premiere Pro 
fixes their color grading issue. I've heard that it's not something that's gonna happen in 2021, but you never know, they might buy up a third party company that actually makes color grading in Premiere Pro just as good as DaVinci Resolve. We're all got our fingers crossed for that one because once that happens and you get into Premiere Pro with no crashes, in my opinion, it's hard to compete with Premiere Pro. DaVinci Resolve has a lot of cool features and a lot of cool things going on, and I think they're more innovative than Premiere Pro, but Premiere Pro keeps making things better and better. And once you learn how to get Premiere Pro to work in your favor, it's pretty much your best friend. So do me a favor, if you guys wanna see more about file structure, all these things, how I'm actually working in Premiere Pro or editing six or seven YouTube videos in a day, definitely drop a comment below. I'm all about making videos like this to help you guys out. If you're new here, my channel is all about basically helping you guys create content for YouTube to help you take your YouTube channels to the next level. Everything from intros, end screens, outros, lower thirds, animated text, logo reveals, and then as well as talking about equipment, and software, and things like like that so if you guys want to learn more about growing and scaling on youtube in 2021 definitely hit that subscribe button as well turn on those post notifications i'll be dropping content daily i appreciate you guys thank you guys so much see you guys in the next video